China using debt diplomacy to spread global reach. Lesson one: Never trust China. Lesson two: Never take Chinese money. China has been accused of leveraging massive loans to smaller developing countries in order to take over assets and construct military bases in said countries. According to the Center for Global Development, in a practice referred to as debt trap diplomacy or debt colonialism, huge loans are given to countries that will be unable to repay, forcing smaller countries to surrender assets and territory when the loans default. Infrastructure loans to build roads and ports linked to the Belt and Road Initiative have led to countries owing millions or billions in debt, often accounting for large percentages of the country's GDP. According to the Times, China may be looking to leverage its debt in the Pacific in order to increase its military footprint in the South Pacific. In April, China informed Vanuatu that it had intentions of building a military base. Vanuatu now owes 246 million U.S. dollars to China. Other countries like Pakistan, Djibouti, Fiji, Montenegro, the Maldives, Kyrgyzstan, and Laos all owe China massive amounts of money. Can Chinese debt take over the world? They don't even have real internet. Cooking oil in China is recycled from the gutters. Chinese authorities have battled to get rid of gutter oil in the country's kitchens for years, cracking down on illegal oil production rings since 2011. But now it seems the black market oil in streetside stalls could be used to power up airplane engines. With Chinese cooking being so heavy on the oil, some enterprising people thought up a cheap way to produce it by recycling garbage. First, they scoop up waste containing used oil or animal fat from sewers, gutters, or dumpsters and take it to processing plants. After the mixture is refined and processed, the oil is repackaged and sold to vendors in small restaurants at below market prices. As reprocessed sewage, gutter oil contains carcinogens, which may lead to cancer and other health problems. But with the disgusting oil served up in cheap street eats, unsuspecting foodies may be none the wiser. Other countries have long used recycled oil not for cooking but for industrial purposes, something China only caught on to in recent years. In 2014, Boeing partnered with a Chinese aircraft company to turn gutter oil into sustainable biofuel. After a Hainan Airlines flight flew from Shanghai to Beijing last March on a 50-50 mix of gutter oil and jet fuel, China might very well turn gutter oil into gold. China is building a city covered in plants. The world's first forest city, designed by Italian architect Stefano Borelli, is currently under construction in southern China and is expected to be completed by the year 2020. The forest city is located in a mountainous region north of the city of Liuzhou in southern China. The city will host 30,000 people and will include offices, houses, hotels, hospitals, and schools. The buildings will draw on geothermal energy to provide cooling and heating systems for interior air conditioning. Solar panels will be installed over the rooftops to harvest solar energy. A total of 40,000 trees and almost 1 million plants, representing over 100 species, will be planted on building facades, in parks, and on city streets. The trees and plants will absorb an estimated 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide and 57 tons of fine dust pollutants each year. Meanwhile, the greenery will produce 900 tons of oxygen annually. A fast rail line will connect the forest city to Liuzhou, a city with a population of some 3.7 million. Vertical forests have become a recent popular concept in architecture. Nanjing in eastern China is currently building two green towers that can absorb 25 tons of carbon dioxide a year. Taipei City in Taiwan is also building a carbon-eating tower, which reportedly will be able to absorb 130 tons of carbon dioxide emissions a year. Duck and cover. China's Tiangong-1 space station is said to come crashing into Earth within the next few months. The Tiangong-1 was launched in 2011 as part of China's push to become a space superpower, and has been used for manned and unmanned missions. In 2016, Chinese officials confirmed that they lost control of the space station and that it would crash into Earth in 2017 or 2018. Over the past few weeks, the 8.5-ton station has dipped below 300 kilometers in altitude. When the Tiangong-1 was operational, the The lab orbited at an altitude of 370 kilometers. Most of the space station is expected to disintegrate in the atmosphere, but experts say some parts weighing up to 100 kilograms could reach the Earth's surface.
The lower the altitude, the denser the atmosphere, and the faster the Tiangong-1 will burn up. China's space agency has told the UN it expects the Tiangong-1 to crash between October 2017 and April 2018. The craziest air pollution protection masks people wear in China. Air quality and pollution levels have gotten so bad in Beijing that the government has issued a red alert for the first time, warning people to stay inside with their air purifiers or face one of the smoggiest polluted atmospheric conditions on Earth. Those that choose to brave the choking toxic smog should probably heed our list of the most fashion forward and craziest air pollution masks. First up is the Airwaves mask created by Frog Shanghai. It connects to a smartphone app to measure pollution levels and keep wearers in the know about air quality in different neighborhoods. If you want other people to see your smile but still breathe cleaner air, there's also the nasal air purifier made by Mai Xing Ren. But only nose breathing is covered and any mouth breaths are still going to be pretty polluted. Another nasal option is the InfaPure Invisible Air Filtration Mask. But if you don't like sticking stuff up your nose and you still want your face to be visible, there's the Sunny Smile Transparent Mask. This Toto Bobo mask is somewhere between the transparent masks and the full face coverage filters. If you like the vintage look, you can always go to the Army Surplus store and snag one of these retro World War II style masks. For a more modern style, there are all kinds of apocalypse chic choices as showcased at the 2014 China Fashion Week by designer Yin Peng. Joggers and runners need to be especially careful when taking deep breaths of pollution while getting some exercise. Cyclists are also vulnerable to the air quality problems in China, so British artist Matt Hope designed this breathing bicycle that uses the power generated by pedaling to filter the air for the person riding it to breathe. Another innovation in air purification by artist Chu Chi uses a natural solution by attaching a breathing apparatus to a box with a plant inside that produces pure oxygen. These artist mock-ups show clothing that has the face mask built in. Are these the future of breathing? Imagine what these kids will be wearing on their faces by the time they're old enough to choose for themselves. These people certainly have some interesting taste, and it looks like there's a lot more where that came from. China planning on going full Big Brother in 2020. China is nothing if not innovative when it comes to finding ways to exert control over their people, and it looks like they're rolling out an entirely new way to spy on the public. Beijing plans to launch its social credit system nationwide by 2020 to rate the trustworthiness of 1.3 billion people by assigning each individual a score. The system will take things into account such as credit history, contract obligation fulfillment, personal characteristics, behavior and preferences, and interpersonal relationships to calculate a score. Once the system becomes mandatory, people with low scores could be punished with slower internet speeds, be denied access to certain restaurants, nightclubs or golf courses, and restricted from traveling. Scores will also affect an individual's rental applications, ability to secure insurance or a loan, as well as social security benefits. Only one question remains, why aren't you in China right now? Beijing fuming after U.S. sends ships to South China Sea. For a nation claiming to be a global superpower, China sure whines a lot. According to two American officials, two U.S. Navy warships sailed near the South China Sea Islands on Sunday while carrying out freedom of navigation operations. The USS Antietam, a guided missile cruiser, and the USS Higgins, a guided missile destroyer, came within 12 nautical miles of the Paracel Islands. One of the U.S. officials told Reuters that the American vessels carried out maneuvering operations close to Tree, Lincoln, Triton, and Woody Islands in the Paracels. Tensions have been on the rise in the area after China, for the first time, landed one of its long-range H-6K strategic bombers on one of its man-made islands in the Paracels, Woody Island. China claims they confronted the American ships and gave them a good finger-wagging, but here's the problem, Beijing. That ain't your sea. 